hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living Tempai Dragon Boo Boo Stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1400 ladder. I say 1400 because we're only seven subscribers away, and I'm hoping that this video can get us there. I uh, apologize in advance for the really crummy uh, proxies, but you know what that means whenever we got to bust out the webcam and shoot it down, face it to the ground. Welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth. In today's episode, as you heard by the title, we're talking about Tenpai Dragons. If I can even find a dragon here, I've got too many hand traps in this deck, can you tell? <laughs> we're going to be talking about all that and more in this deck. If, for those of you who are new to Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth, we're going to be talking about the combos, the choke points, what this deck is all about. Because Tenpai Dragon is going to be a Tier 1 deck. Um, not only that, it's a very small engine, so I feel that it can be played in a lot of different decks. It's just like a sub-engine, and if you want to play it as like a just regular Tempai Dragon deck, you have a bunch of non-engine space available to you to throw in, you guessed it, hand traps, or because it's a going second deck, you can throw in board breakers as well. So I'm sure that this is going to be a very long in-depth episode. You know better than I do at this point, so be sure to like the video. You can even save the video to your favorites, or you can save it to your watch later in case you, I don't know, you got to go take a dump or you got to go to work or something, and you got to close out of YouTube. If you keep it in your watch later playlist, then when you go back into your watch later, you can continue right from where you left off. So with all that out of the way, um, let's go ahead and uh, start talking about this deck. Um, I don't want to waste too much time on these because I do want to get into the test hands and show you how the deck functions and all the combo lines. It is a bit of a combo deck, but it's not like, you know, Fire King, Snake Eyes combos where you're watching YouTube video after YouTube video. I would say it's very mid-range. I would say the equivalent to maybe Sprite, if I had to, or even Centurion, maybe Centurion with a couple extra steps uh, in case you got to like play around hand traps or like play through a shift or stuff like that. And yeah, this deck can play, can actually OTK the opponent through a shifter and it can also OTK under Pot of Prosperity cutting the damage in half. So that's hot. <laughs> so let's go ahead and um, let's, let's just dive on into these monsters. So for the main deck monsters, I want to do this episode a bit differently because we are like a month and change or like a month on the dot away from these monsters. So we're still a little bit away from getting these cards in the TCG. That's also not to say that Legacy of Destruction may have a TCG exclusive uh, archetype that makes these fire dragons even better. Um, so do keep that in mind at the time that I'm posting this video. We're still like a month and change from Legacy of Destruction. We may get a TCG exclusive archetype that makes this deck even better or just, you know, makes all the combo lines very different. Um, also, in case there's like a ban list, like a month and a half down the road or whatever. Um, so you've got your three Tempai Dragons. They're all based on the Mahjong tiles for, I don't know, the two of you that play Mahjong. I've never played it. Um, you've got Zongdora at 1500, Fedora at 1600, and then you've got Baidora at 1700. They all share the same effect that during the battle phase, so either player's battle phase, on a quickie, quick effect, you can Synchro Summon using this card as a material. Um, so if you're in the battle phase, you go Zongdora, or effect the synchro summon and they go imperm you can chain one of these guys to just get the play anyway and then the opponent wastes the hand trap um then they all have secondary effects um so zongdora says at the start of the damage step which is very important you get special summon a level four lower fire dragon monster from your deck so you're either going to summon the Baidora. Uh, or Fedora. Fedora says whenever it's normal or special summon or at the start of the damage step, you can special summon a level four or lower fire dragon monster from your graveyard. Uh, Fedora has the secondary effect that uh, while it is face up on the field, uh, your fire dragon type monsters cannot be destroyed in battle. Then you have Baidora, which is essentially the Stratos, where whenever it's normal or special summon, you can add to your hand or set to the field a Sangin spell or trap. Now they say Sangin spell or trap the translations here in the TCG might be different, but just bear with me on that. So you can search either the quick play called Sangin Kaiman, or you can search for the field spell, which is essentially a miscellaneous Sarasaurus, which is fucking bananas. <laughs> so we're, we're going to get into all that. Um, and then his secondary effect is that while he's face up on the field, you take no battle damage from battles involving your fire dragon monsters. So with all three of these up on the field, you attack, let's say, you know, the opponent has an SP Little Knight. You attack with a Zongdora. At the start of the damage step, you activate Zongdora's effect to summon another one. Since it's in the damage step, SP Little Knight can't be activated. Um, you will summon out, say, Baidora. Baidora's effect activates, allowing you to search a uh, the quick play spell or the field spell until we get a trap. 
Um, obviously, if you're attacking into a Little Knight, you wouldn't want this to die, so you would go for Fedora instead. And then if you've got like a Baidora or one any of these dragons in the grave, then you can use Fedora to resurrect it back. And then you've got your little trifecta combo where they can't be destroyed in battle and you take no battle damage. Um, that is something else that I want to keep in mind, uh, specifically because of the fact that Zongdora and Fedora can activate effects at the start of the damage step, meaning, you know, you're in the damage step. For those of you who don't know, uh, the damage step within the battle phase is a very important phase. The damage step is a phase that the only things that can activate is monster effects that have met their conditions to activate, such as, uh, Fedora and Zongdora. And the only other type of monster effects that can activate is monster effects that negate the activation or what can also be activated in the uh, damage step is counter trap cards that have met their activation requirements as well as uh, spell cards that modify the attack and defense stat of a monster and that's primarily what a lot of people know about the damage step right like it's the phase that you know you can use something like droplets or rush recklessly for the two people that play that um or you know anything that adjusts attack and defense so like you can use droplets in the damage step because it adjusts attack and defense stats or you can use baronet de fleur because baronet de fleur says negate the activation of a card which is very important if you go say like zongdora attack into a little knight and you activate its effect at the start of the damage step to summon a Another one they can't chain little knight they can't even hand trap you they can't even imperm you because imperm negates the effect it doesn't negate activation that is something extremely extremely important to keep in mind with this um when playing this deck is that people can't like they can't hand trap you hardly whether it's because you got the field spell up um you know, protecting your monsters in your main phase one only, which is something that people forget about, uh, or you're activating an effect in the damage step. So that's very important to keep in mind with these cards. Um, so those are the three main monsters. Uh, the reason why I said that these are the main monsters is because this is all that we have, and really besides the quick play and the field spell, this is really only your engine, which is why uh, we're seeing in the OCG, we are seeing builds of Tenpai Dragon, if they're not playing board breakers, playing over 20 hand traps this build that i'm messing around with right now plays 22 ha <laughs> so it's absolutely busted when over half of your deck can play like 22 i've even seen some tempai dragon builds that play up to 25 hand traps it's absolutely insane you have so much room for this you could be playing like 15 16 18 board breakers you know triple ragaki triple dark hole triple thrust and just go second and for those of you who are going to say well then you lose going first that's why you side deck in heat wave and that's also why we play uh heavenly spheres because heavenly spheres backed up with three to four hand traps the opponent is crapping all over the venue floor so with all that out of the way let's start doing what we always do in these episodes and start going into uh these test hands and show you how to play this deck and then we can also talk about the synchro monsters um like i said this engine is very small i've seen some builds messing around with dragon link um because dragon link you know you can make the striker dragon revive a monster uh there's also a uh, sea dragons atlantis otk line where that allows you to play through dimensional barrier in case the opponent de barriers you and call synchro because you are mostly a synchro based deck obviously with the quick effect synchro in the battle phase that's going to be your go-to plan. Um, but you can do like Promethean Princess, Zelantis, Raging Phoenix. You can do that OTK line, even though you're not really playing a Snake Eyes engine. So uh, let me go ahead and move my mouse here. And uh, we are done shuffling. So let's see what we hit. I'm going to have to keep this facing me. Ash, Zongdora, Nib, Kaiman, and uh, what is this? Baidora? Yeah, Baidora. So we opened up three engine pieces. Uh, and then we opened up two hand traps. Uh, when you do the math, uh, which you can actually go to a hypo, I think it's hypo or hyper geometric calculator, you can do the math on this. Um, when I did the math, unless I just read it wrong, but I'm pretty sure I read it right, playing 22 hand traps in a 40 card deck, opening up a five card hand, your chance of opening up at least one hand trap is like 98 or if you round it up like 99%. So you're all but guaranteed to open up at least one hand trap. Ideally, you want to open up two to three. I like three just because like, Ain't no deck playing through three hand traps, even in a tier zero snake eyes format. Um, the hand trap ratios really depend on you as a player. You know, OCG kind of does does some funky things with like one nib, and then they might play like two ogre, two moonlit chill, things like that. Ogre is going to be making a comeback once this deck comes out because it's just so disgusting being able to activate a hand trap in the battle phase. Um, 
And so you don't want to see a lot of engine, and you normally won't because you're playing three Kaiman, three of the Manor Field Spell, three by Dora, three Zongdora, and then two of the Fedora. So like, what is that, like 12, 15 cards, something like that? So you you ideally don't want to see a lot of engine. Like, if you see Zongdora and like the by Dora and the Kaiman are uh, uh, hand traps, like that's full on OTK. You could OTK with just this one Zongdora. So let's go ahead and start showing off the combos uh, here, we're just going to assume that we crap on the opponent with an Ash. Um, it really doesn't matter. Even if, like, you nib them, you don't care about the stats of the token. You can just summon the token in attack mode, and then Zongdora gets you to Fedora, or in this case, you normal summon Baidora and then activate the Zongdora. We'll be talking about that as well. Um, we're going to just assume that we didn't activate the nib, because honestly, nib really doesn't go off a lot, which is why I'm only playing it at one. Um, so let's just do our typical, like, OTK combo line here. Uh, so we're going to normal summon the Baidora. Ideally, you want to already have the field spell because uh, you can just activate that and then just misc your board um uh, and then you know they can try and ash you and then they just look like an idiot <laughs> um but yeah so we're just gonna assume that like the one ash work you can even assume that you got nib it's just more damage on the board if you want um but yeah let's just say that they really didn't end on much let's just say they bricked we're gonna normal summon by dora we're gonna activate the effect remember that it can add to hand or set uh, a Sangin spell or trap. So we're going to go ahead and say that we set the Sangin manner because we already have the Kaiman in hand. Even if they do Droll us, Droll really doesn't hurt this deck because um, you're going to add either the Kaiman to hand. If, if you don't have the Kaiman, then you can just like set the field spell to the field and play around the Droll. Uh, if you open up Zongdora and you go like Prosperity and Search and they Droll you, you're like, that's fine. I already have game with the Zongdora. Um, so we're just going to say that we set the field spell. We're going to activate the field spell. Now the field spell, this, this field spell is busted AF. So the field spell says that during your main phase one only people you know Yu-Gi-Oh players can't read cards so they think it's just permanent <laughs> during your main phase one only fire dragon type monsters are unaffected by the opponent's activated effect so any other kind of monsters fair game it's just your fire dragons uh its effect also says that uh once a turn you can add a uh fire dragon monster level four or lower so basically any or excuse me a tempi dragon you add a tempi monster from deck to hand and then you ditch a card if it's destroyed it has to be in the battle phase if it's destroyed in the battle phase you target a uh, dragon synchro monster on your field and you double its attack until the end of the turn that's key for otk and with uh, the trident dragon on the synchro out of raging battle that i actually just bought an ulti of for like 82 dollars because it's worth it <laughs> um so we have this established, so now if they try and affect Valor us, if they try and uh, do something in our main phase, it's not going to work. This is essentially a miscellaneous Ceresaurus, like I said. Th this card's busted AF, uh, especially when you combine it with the level 10 Synchro uh, that says, hey, you can't activate any effects in the battle phase. That has won me so many games. So we're going to activate the effect. Well, we don't even need to activate the effect of the spell because we have Zongdor. That's how busted this is, like real talk. So Zongdor has another effect that we haven't talked about yet for good reason because now it's about to come up. When you have Zongdor in your hand and a uh, uh, fire dragon monster on the field, if I could talk today, you can activate the effect and special summon it from your hand. So it's it's a free extender, and it's the one tuner you have, which is the one issue I have with Tempai Dragon right now, at least in this first line of support. Uh, Baidora is not a tuner. Fedora is not a tuner. This is your only tuner. So if the opponent goes like Prohibition, calls Zongdora, you're kind of just crapping on the floor because now you can't use your one tuner. Yeah, you've got stuff like Ash and Valor, whatever. You can supplement other tuners, per se. Um, but that is something important to keep in mind. So we're going to special summon the Zongdor. Uh, and we're just going to go to battle phase now. We, we've established our board. Um, we're going to go 15 attack. Ask for a response. We're not going to do nothing. We're going to say, okay, at the start of the damage step, use the effect to summon. They're going to go Ash. We're going to say, you can't. Because at the start of the damage step, you're acting like a Momo. Um, judge, he is trying to play a hand trap in the damage step. You can't do that. <laughs> we're going to summon out the Fedora. The attack's going to continue on through. They're going to take 1,500. We're then going to attack with 16 and then 17. If all this goes through uninhibited, you're looking at... 4,800 points of damage, if I can do math. It doesn't matter if I'm off, because we're going to do, like, over 30,000 damage. <laughs> so, we're still in battle phase, right? You might be thinking, well, Avery, uh, what, what are you doing, Sugar Boo Bear? You can't be doing nothing. Yeah, we can. Remember, these all have quick effects. Uh, so, we're going to activate the effect of Zongdora to use this effect to Synchro Summon. Specifically, I'm going to do the Fedora, because then we can resurrect the Fedora and get back to Zongdora. You're going to see how we do that in just one moment. We're going to make the, God, I, this name, Sangin Rise Dragon Bident Dragion. I know these names are insane. Be interesting to see how they translate this to the TCG. So Bident Dragion's a level seven synchro. Guess what? It's also a tuner and it's a 2600 attack beat stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bident Dragon has the effect that when it's Synchro Summoned, you can target a Fire Dragon Monster in your graveyard and Special Summon it. But you cannot summon any other type of monsters for the rest of the turn except Fire Dragon Monsters. 
Um, and then if three or more attacks have been declared this turn, once per duel, you can special summon it from your grave and then pop a spell or trap non-targeting. Once per duel to summon this back and still OTK is bananas, especially because we already have this lined up on the field to make a level 10 synchro. So we're going to activate the effect of Idora. We're going to target the Fedora. That's going to summon itself back out. We haven't used the effect of Fedora yet. Remember, it's when it's normal, special summon, or at the start of the damage step. Um, so we can do it at any point. But we'll just say we use it when it's summoned, use the effect, and bring back the Zongdora. We now have another 2600, 1500, and 1600. If this is somehow not game, maybe you play Prosperity, then you just keep going. But this is already game. <laughs> like, it's it's insane. And we still have the Kaiman to activate this and bring out another Tempai Dragon for even more gas. Like, I don't know, maybe the opponent played the Moonlit Chill, which even then this deck just blows through a Moonlit Chill like it's nobody's business. It's actually really funny. Moonlit Chill is not an answer to this. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go attack, attack, attack somehow the opponent survives they i don't know they played relay soul i don't know they pulled an anime moment um we're gonna activate by dora which it doesn't matter which one we play because the cool thing about all three of these dragons with their quick effect synchro summoning soft once per turn ain't that sexy i'm gonna put that on my tinder profile that's gonna be my new like like safe word soft once per turn <laughs> so these are all soft once per turn so now that we brought back zongdor and fedora we can use zongdor's effect again to synchro summon it's just a soft once per turn we don't care we're gonna use the effect of Bidora uh to synchro with our level seven tuner synchro because this deck is just <laughs> this deck is just like that we can go we're, we're gonna show both here we can go into either Trident Dragon and like kill them with 18,000 damage. <laughs> or we can do, God, these names Sangin, Super Dragon, Transcend Dragon. Um, so Transcend Dragon, uh, just like with the um, Biden Dragon, if three or more attacks have been declared this turn and it's in your grave, once per duel, you can sum you can special summon it back and then pop any card on the field non targeting. So it's really good for getting rid of like anything else that might be on the board. And it's got the really niche effect. While it's face up on the field, the opponent cannot activate any cards or effects during the battle phase. So like I was beating, I don't even remember what player I was beating. I think it was like a branded deck or something. And I attacked with 3k and he goes, no effects in the battle phase is really something. <laughs> it's so insane. Like no one is expecting stuff in the battle phase like to just be stopped. It's hilarious. So you can do that, and then it's got a little cheeky effect. It doesn't really ever come up often. When you summon it, you can activate the effect, change all the opponent's monsters to attack mode, and then while he's face up on the field, the opponent's monsters must attack this if they're able to. So it's kind of like a nightmare pain in that regard. They have to swing into a 3,000 beat stick. So it's really good for closing out games. This can swing for 3,000, and then you can bring back the Bident Dragon and swing for another 2,600 since three or more attacks have been declared this turn. Or... And what you may go for is Trident Dragon, where when it's summoned, when it synchro summons successfully, you can target up to two cards on your field and pop them. It gains one additional attack for each. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just say that we do that. We're going to target the field spell and the Fedora to pop them both. Since the field spell was destroyed during the battle phase, we can target the Trident Dragon since it's a synchro monster and double its attack. This is now at 6,000 attack and it can swing three times into the face. Yeah, that's 18,000 damage. Plus, we already did what? Uh, 4,800 plus another 26 from the dragon. We can bring it back and do another 26. Yeah, th this is over 30,000 damage. It's insane. <laughs> so that is the basic, like, one-card combo. Like, if I just opened up... we all, Even if all I had was Zongdora, I pretty much could have done this whole line. It just would have been extra steps. Um, so, yeah. So that is that. Let me go ahead and uh, shuffle it up here. And then we're going to go ahead and talk about some other OTK lines. And I'm just shuffling this up here. I do also apologize about the glare. I have a really crappy webcam, and I've been, but I've bought like four or five webcams, and every single one, for whatever reason, does not work on my PC. And it's not like it's a crappy PC. Like I've got like a, what is it, a Radeon 580 in here or something? Like I can, I can play uh, Far Cry like max settings. Like it's it's not a bad PC. I'm, I'm I also use this for editing, and I use Edius to edit my stuff. So let's see. We got Ash by Dora, Zongdora. Uh, Ball Drake, which this could be any hand trap you want. It really doesn't matter. Uh, and then Moonlit Chill. So we opened up three hand traps. That's disgusting. Ideally, I want to open up like just Zongdora. Uh, and then what are we drawing into? We're drawing into the field spell. So yeah, we just absolutely win. But let's talk about what happens if the opponent debarriers you. So let's go ahead and just uh, we'll put these hand traps on top. 
I just wanted to do that to kind of show the concept of like, hey, you have all these interruptions and you can still win the ball game, pimp. So with a D barrier, and they call Synchro, the, the one issue I have with this Zelantis OTK is that you have to have uh, basically access to all three dragons. So if you open up, say, two, and you pan trap your opponent, they call, you know, they D barrier call Synchro, you can still get there. Um, very susceptible to nib. Ideally, the opponent's not going to have nib because you're not going to see the D barrier in game one. They're most likely going to side out Nibiru um, because they can't nib you. you. You saw in that first combo, we only summoned like what, twice? Uh, we do all of our summoning in the battle phase. So the only way that they can hit us with nib is if we go into main phase two, we end our turn and they go end phase nib. Or like as soon as we hit main phase two, they go nib. Um, which that's come up once out of like, I think over a hundred games I've played with this deck at this point. So like, it, it just never comes up. If it does and it does, that's just fucking Yu-Gi-Oh. Like people are going to just keep the rock in their deck. So with all that explanation out of the way, let's go ahead and dive on into the link combo. Uh, so we're going to summon by door. We're going to activate the effect to set the field spell to our field. You want to set the field spell because you need to have access to all three of your dragons so um yeah let's just go ahead and talk through this so we set the field spell we activate it we're going to use the field spells effect to add let's see if i could find it uh that's not it we're going to add fedora and then we're going to go ahead and pitch the fedora so now that's in our graveyard we're going to activate the effect of zong door to special summon it since we have a fire dragon and then we are going to link off into Hide a fire charmer. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, Avery, what if the opponent doesn't have a fire dragon? So another way that you can play around it is depending on how your opening hand looks. Um, if you're playing like by steals or something, you can summon out a by steal, and then you've got the extender to go into Promethean Princess. Um, that is like ideally what you want to be doing, right? Um, so we're gonna say that Hida summons back like whatever, and it could this could be like an Ash Blossom, right? Um, so they bring, we bring back their ash, whatever fire monster in the grave. We're going to link off with it and we're going to go into, uh, Promethean princess. And now Promethean princess's effect is going to revive our fedora. Fedora's effect, since it was normal or special summon, can get us another monster. We're going to go ahead and go for the Zongdora. Now, thanks to this, we have enough monsters on our board to where we can, uh, do all the plays that we need to do into Raging Phoenix and Solantis and all that. So we're going to link off the Promethean Princess and the Fedora in order to summon out our Raging Phoenix. Raging Phoenix isn't going to be sticking around for long because we're just going to go straight into our Zelantis. Zelantis is, of course, going to activate and it's going to banish everything and then bring everything back. Uh, now that a monster is special summoned to the opponent's board and we have a fire monster, we can activate the effect of Promethean Princess, popping the Zongdora, popping their monster. That's going to go for Promethean Princess. Raging Fire, whatever his name is, is going to activate, summoning itself back. I'm looking at this upside down, so it's hard to see where my link arrows are at having a look at my camera. But ideally, you want to be co-linked with as many monsters as possible so that in the battle phase, the Lantis can pop more cards. Um, I actually kind of screwed it up here while talking it through. I actually technically should have summoned back Bidora so that uh, Raging Phoenix can get the most amount of attack points as possible, which 200 points ain't really going to make a difference. This is still like, what, over 8,000, over 9,000 points of damage? So that is how you OTK. Again, it does require a couple of cards. Um... But that is ideally how you're going to OTK um, through getting hit with D-Barrier. Obviously, if you get hit with D-Barrier and Shifter, this doesn't work because you need your graveyard for this. Um, but yeah, that's the combo, uh, ideally how it should work um, when OTKing through a D-Barrier. So now I want to do some test hands as usual. We can also talk about some uh, choke points and all that fun stuff. But this deck can play through Shifter. Um, I'm actually currently main decking three copies of Shifter just because it's it's such an auto win card. Um, because you can go say summon Zongdora, attack, start of the damage step, summon by Dora, get you to the quick play, fifteen plus seventeen, and then you can do Kaiman into the search the Fedora, summon the Fedora, attack for another sixteen. That's forty eight hundred, so you're over halfway there. Um, and then you can slam together uh, 
a four, the, the Zongdor and say Fedora to make the level seven Synchro Tuner, swing for another 26, and then you can do uh, the 26 and then the Bidora into say like the the Transcend Dragon that doesn't let effects happen in the battle phase, um, and then you can swing for game, and then that's how you play through uh, Shifter. Uh, so this opening hand, we're looking at four, Five, this is absolutely disgusting. Uh, Ash, Shifter, Valor, and we've got two engine cards. Um, how do you beat this deck when it comes to choke points, when it's a going second deck? I feel like this deck really relates a lot to Sky Strikers, kind of, and Centurion, I would say, more than um, Striker. Because the thing is, with Striker, especially now with Link Age, they really, besides like some mandatory spells they have to play... They're known for being a going second deck that plays some board breaker cards like Lightning Storm and stuff, but then also playing a decent amount of hand traps depending on how you want to go with the deck. Definitely not 22 worth, but something similar. They want to go second. They want to use their engage to get to the ray, go for link age, uh, and just kill you, you know, as quick as possible. If they got to go first, they're going to end on like a Shizuku, ideally with multi-roll with like as many Widow Anchors as they can muster on their board or even like with Imperms, hand traps, what have you. Um, with this, it's a similar thing where you want to go second. You just want to blow them out of the out of the park with hand traps. Um, that's why we're also maxing out on things like Valor and Imperm because they're not once per turn. Uh, if you really like have to get off the Valor, depending on the matchup, you can go activate Shifter and then chain the Valor to negate an opponent's monster, and then that way you can play around Shifter and still get the value out of your Valor. Um, to me, if you know, especially if you're playing against like Fire King or Snake Eyes, you play Shifter in the draw phase, they're gonna be crapping, you know, all over the floor. I've said that like five times this video. I need to find something else to say. But Shifter is just such an auto win card that you don't care about losing access to Valor, especially Shifter followed up with like an Ash. Like, what's the opponent gonna do? They're gonna thrust and like what? We don't have any monsters on the field. What are you gonna do? Set an Imperm? Cool. My field spell makes your Imperm a mute point. Can I OTK you now? Like, it doesn't matter. So um, yeah, three hand traps, and then what, what are we even drawn into? We're drawn into Sang and Kaiman. Like, this, this is absolutely an OTK. Um, some great hand traps, though, that you can play against this deck is Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, because, again, the field spell does not protect at all in the battle phase. So, <clears throat> you know, even if this is up, if they go, you know, battle phase, activate uh, Zongdora, you go Ogre, well, then this thing's gonna die. They have to chain, we have to chain one of our other Tempai Dragons in order to do that synchro play. And you might be thinking, well, Avery, that's kind of pointless. Well, not necessarily. You may have droplets that you can use. The damage step droplets is also very good. You, actually, better yet, you should ideally wait until the level 7 Dragon Synchro Monster's up, ogre that, <clears throat> and then we have to use the effect of uh, Bidora to synchro with it uh, in order to get out a level 10 monster and hopefully win that way. We're losing out on 2,600 points of damage. Uh, ogring the field spell is also really good. If if we need the field spell to go off, if we're playing all hand traps in our hand and all we have is the field spell and you ogre this, well, now it's dead. We don't have our protection and then that just opens you up to hand trap the deck more and things like that. Um, <clears throat> I do think that going forward, uh, once we get Legacy of Destruction, I feel like it's going to be a hand trap war for sure. I've already had a Tempai mirror match that luckily your boy won. Where we were just throwing hand traps at each other. He activated an Imperm on one of my monsters. I chained the effect to Synchro Summon. He activated another Imperm. I chained my Imperm in the same column as his Imperm. And then he got confused and chained his Cross Out Designator, banishing his third Imperm. Yeah, it's going to be one of those wars. And I'm not saying it's healthy. I'm not saying it's, you know, not toxic. Some people will think it's toxic. I think it's funny as hell that you can just OTK like it's nobody's business. Um... But let's go ahead and, uh, I guess, just play out this hand. Let's just say that we Shifter and we Ash. That's enough to stop them. We go for Sangin Kaiman. We've got the Zongdora, so we just win. Uh, summon the Zongdora. Go to Battle Phase Attack. Uh, we could even activate the Field Spell if we want to. It doesn't really matter. Uh, Battle Phase Attack. Damage Step Effect. Go for Bidora. Bidora gets us another Kaiman, because why not? Swing for 15 and 17. <clears throat> and then, still in Battle Phase, we can activate the Kaiman. If they Ash us here, it's honestly fine um because like <clears throat> even if we don't get access to this we still have uh the zongdora and the bidora up um yeah i mean like you already see where this is going we're gonna attack we're gonna do the same thing that we did before we don't have access to the graveyard uh but it doesn't matter because we can still swing for 26 both of these become the level 7 synchro and then we can do this and this into the 3000 and then that's still game but now let's say that they did ashes because the kaiman is once per turn so let's say that um, they ash us, right? This is uh, banished. So we go Kaiman, they go Ash. <clears throat> okay, we're under Shifter. Can we still win? 
So we can do both of these. Um, if you do the level seven, then yeah, it's gonna be rough um, because you're gonna get another 2,600 out on the board, but then you're not gonna have anything else to work with. And this is where ashing, especially if you know the Tempai player does shifter you, you ash this since it's once per turn, you know, now you're in, we're in the battle phase. There's not much really else that we can do. This isn't protecting, you know, the field spell is not protecting our quick play. So we've already swung for 15 and 17. What would I do in this situation? <sighs> well, we already opened up a Sangin Kainen. We attack with both. We could have gone for Fedora, but that doesn't really make any difference. Um, we actually would have been doing 100 damage less. So I think what I would do is just try and get the game back to my turn. So we're going to swing with both. Doing a synchro play is not going to matter here. I'm going to go main phase two. I'm going to link off. And I'm actually just going to chill on a Heavenly Spheres. Now you're probably thinking, well, Avery, why are you going to chill on a Heavenly Spheres with also setting a Sangin Kaiman face down? Because we don't have access to our graveyard, right? And so by synchroing into like a, a Bident Dragon, the level seven, it's not going to benefit us other than doing more damage. It's just a vanilla monster. We can't resurrect anything because there's nothing in our graveyard because of Shifter. But by doing this, it's an interruption they have to play through. We have the Baylor that's going to be live once they start their turn. We also Ash them in this example's case. Maybe we didn't and the Shifter was enough, so then they're facing down potentially another interruption. Keep in mind, remember, we did open up uh, Ash. So, you know, if we didn't use it and the one Shifter was enough to, to stop them, let's say you're playing against Fire King, Voiceless Voice, whatever. I, I have Voiceless voice players they just pass turn on a shifter all the time it's actually really funny so if that's the case if you didn't use the ash then they're staring down one two three interruptions you shifter <clears throat> they pass turn they draw to what like now six cards in hand um and they're down in life points especially if you're close to time that matters uh and then you've got two interruptions and this so they're playing really with maybe like a three card hand plus you've got the kaiman uh for interruption because you contribute the spheres you can go for a Bidora, and then that can search you, say, like another field spell or another quick play. If they go to the battle phase to try and attack, you can activate the Kaiman to go for Zongdora, and then Zongdora gets you out Fedora. Now all of them can't be destroyed in battle, and you just summon them in defense that you don't take any damage in case they negate the Bidora. So this little combo alone really helps get you there. Even if you didn't have the Kaiman, you could just go Spheres to tribute to get Zongdora, and then Zongdora gets Fedora. And now neither of them can be destroyed in battle. You just play them in defense and they're indestructible. And then you get the ball game back to your turn, still with two hand traps in hand. So now we've talked about all of this stuff about going second and building a board, stopping the opponent from playing. Um, let me go ahead and shuffle here. See if we can get an opening hand uh, with like just a bunch of hand traps. Like hopefully just like one engine card. Because even if the opponent makes us go first, like let's say it's game one, like you're not able to side deck. And if you side deck, you're gonna want to side deck assuming you're going first. You want to bring in like heat waves and stuff. Heat wave says you can activate this card at the start of your main phase one. Neither player can normally special summon effect monsters until your next draw phase. So it completely skips the opponent's turn because ain't no play playing, you know, uh, rescue rabbit with vanilla monsters in 2024. So let's see, we've got three, four, five. Beautiful. So Bell, Ash, Imperm, Fedora, and then Prosperity. So this is actually a perfect example. Let's see what the Prosperity can get us to. We're going to go Prosperity, and don't worry, we're going to be showing you how to OTK through Prosperity. We're going to banish six cards. You just banish your Link Monsters, because if you're going first, it's not going to come up. Three, four, five, and six. And hey, look at that. We hit the Bidora. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, well, Avery, if you didn't hit your, uh, you know, engine cards, and you just hit all hand traps, like if you didn't hit the Bidora, you'd lose. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do anything. Uh, even now, if the opponent goes um, on res droll, or if we summon and they go, you know, imperm, yeah, we're kind of crapping on the floor because we've got three hand traps that got to hopefully get us there with the opponent going second. Is that really a big deal? Most decks can't play through three hand traps, but not every deck is going to get hit by a bell, you know, compared to something like Ash and Imperm. So it's something important to keep in mind. But this is my video. We're going to say that they don't hand trap us, even though they would hand trap me because I have dog water luck in this game. Um, we are going to go ahead, and I'm actually going to go ahead and go for the field spell to set it, and then activate it in case like they wanted to try and be cute and do something. Um, so <clears throat> I'm setting that. We're going to go ahead and activate the effect of the field spell to go for Zongdora, and we're just going to pitch the Fedora here. 
um, because it's really not a big deal. On the following turn, when we're able to attack, we can use the Zongdora to go for Fedora and then resurrect another Fedora. So it's not a big deal. Activate the effect of Zongdora to special summon. We're going to link off these going into the Heavenly Spheres. Uh, hopefully you can see that okay. This is the extra monster zone, obviously. Uh, we are going to set the Imperm. And we're going to end our turn. We're sitting on two um, interruptions. So in total, we get the Spheres, the Imperm, and then these two. So you're looking at four interruptions. Uh, the field spell is just sort of chilling. So the opponent starts trying to play. We Imperm them. They're crying. Uh, they try and search. Oh, I need to fix the sleep. Um, we Ash them. Uh, let's say, I don't know, they somehow want to use a Bite Steel. We're going to Bell them just because we can. Uh, they summon, I don't know, we negated their Ash. They're going to try and do a Flamberge line, whatever. We go uh, Spheres, Tribute itself, bounce that card back to the hand. Uh, we can then go Spheres effect. A special summon a dragon from deck. It's attack and defense come zero. We don't care. Uh, we have one of each dragon in this case in our graveyard. So for this example's case, I mean, you could go for Baidora and then set a card. But instead, I'm just going to go for the Fedora. If I could find one. Um, Fedora's effect is going to get us... Here we go. Fedora's effect <clears throat> is going to go for... You could go for Baidora to like set the quick play, but you can't play it. So I would rather go for the Zongdora because the moment that a monster battles, we can activate the Zongdora to special summon out Baidora from deck and you have all three up. Um, so obviously the field spell is not protecting your monsters. You don't really care though because you've got two defensive walls. The Fedora is preventing either of your monsters from being destroyed in battle. That's why we play them in defense. So they have to get rid of them with card effects. And if they've just been interrupted four times they probably don't have much of plays i mean like what are they going to do they're going to summon a black witch that we would have already negated with the imperm if they had that line like we had four interruptions on that like how how can they play through that like yeah sure some decks can play through a basic board like that i'm not saying it's tier zero broken but having those four interruptions like that makes it much more difficult to get through especially when you have these two extra chump blockers that can't even be destroyed in battle it's absolutely insane um but let's say they try to attack. They, they don't know what's going on. They're going to attack Fedora. We use Fedora's effect. Um, this is just the ideal scenario. I don't think anyone's going to be stupid enough to attack and then let us get to this. Um, Baidora's effect is going to da, 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 add the Sengen Kaiman to hand. You don't want to set it because you can't activate. You might as well just keep it in the hand. Maybe the opponent says, oh, well, I'm going to draw you now. You can't search anymore during my turn. Okay. Uh, my, my turn's basically over at this point. Um, so they attack, nothing happens. Maybe they make a little knight and pass. That's fine. We don't really care about little knight because remember that start of the damage step stuff? So we drew into the one of Nib. That's fine. This has zero attack and defense. This doesn't matter. All of our monsters are protected because we're in the main phase currently. And now you kind of just push for game. Let's say, for example, the opponent does just have um, little knight up. You know, for somehow they establish that through our four interruptions. <clears throat> um, you could just go to battle phase. 17 over the little knight and then you've got these two to you know do your normal damage um and then you've got the kaiman you could you know synchro and stuff like that uh, something else i should mention too since we're at this point uh here's something that's really hilarious black rose dragon it's a fire dragon monster did you think about that maybe you didn't this field spell protects the black rose you can activate black rose's effect to nuke the board the opponent can't do anything to it it is absolutely insane. I have had so many times where the opponent goes first, they build up a board, and I'm able to, say, get the Sangen Kaiman in my hand. Maybe I searched it, open it, whatever. Establish, you know, two dragons, Synchro, Black Rose, Activate Effect, Nuke the board. They'll go Effect Railer. Okay, I've got the Field Spell protecting it. It's a Fire Dragon. Everything dies. You can OTK with a single uh, Kaiman. You can use it to go for Zongdora. Zongdora goes for Baidora. Uh, or even Fedora to resurrect one from Grave. Like, you resurrect the Baidora, you've got all three of your dragons, you win. It's absolutely insane. Now, with all that being said, let's finish off on the last thing that I want to show, which is OTKing through Pot of Prosperity. So you might be wondering, well, Avery, you're doing all this damage. What about Pot of Prosperity? What about Moonlit Chill by extension? Well, let's just say that we activated the Pot of Prosperity. Let's say that we just grabbed a Zongdora. We're going to normal summon Zongdora. And we're, we're just going to do our normal plays. Even if the opponent has monsters established, as long as you're able to push through with, like, Trident Dragon or something at the end of the turn, you're fine. So we summon the uh, Zongdora. We're going to go to battle phase and attack. Start of the damage step, we're going to activate in order to summon out the Baidora. Uh, Baidora is going to search us. <clears throat> the Sengen Kaiman. You have to excuse me. I'm losing my voice a little bit from all this talking. We're going to attack for 15 and uh, 17. Uh, still in the uh, battle phase, we're going to activate the Sengen Kaiman. 
we're gonna go for the if I could find it I'm literally just looking at pretty much nothing but hand traps while I'm looking through this deck it's actually really funny uh, some fedora we attack for 16 so <clears throat> let's say like we did 24 right like let's just say they have no monsters so we did 2400 damage activate the effect of Zongdora we're gonna synchro with the fedora and you're gonna do just normal shenanigans what you did before we're gonna summon out the Biden Dragon Biden Dragon's effect it's going to go for the Fedora. Fedora is going to activate getting us back the Zondora. And now we can go 26, which is actually 13, and then half of 15, and then half of 16. I can't do that math. That's in decimals, but you get the point. Um, now we can go um, Bident and the um, Bidora, or Bidora, whatever. Go for... So this is actually a, a point to talk about. If you don't have the field spell established under Prosperity... You don't really want to do Trident Dragon unless you know mathematically you're going to have the gas to get there. Like if we did Trident Dragon now and pop both of these, we can attack three times, but then that's 15, 30, 45 on its own. So what I like to do to ensure that I'm going to get there, I like to go for this first. If you have the field spell established, it doesn't matter because then you can just go for Trident. It's attack doubles. It's at 6,000, half of that, three attacks, that's 9,000 damage, so you're fine. Um, but let's say you, you go for this, right? You want to stop stuff in battle phase. You attack for another 3,000, that's another 15. So at this point, uh, you've done 26. Uh, you did 24 earlier. You did 26, which is 13, plus 15 is 28, 24. That's like, what, over 5,000? If you need to, you can get this back out and swing for another 26, which would actually be 13 under Prosperity. Um, yeah, yeah. Now you're you're really sitting pretty. Um, if you need even more damage, activate Fedora's effect. Synchro with the tuner. Now you can go for Trident Dragon. Trident Dragon's effect is going to pop both of these. He has a total of three attacks now. And remember, since three or more attacks were declared this turn, we can activate this to summon it out. This can swing for another 15, and you're guaranteed to have this go through all three times because this says your opponent can activate cards or effects in the battle phase. Three attacks, even without the field spell, you just won underneath Prosperity. Now, can you win under Prosperity and Moonlit Chill? I'll be honest, I've never had that come up. I don't actually know. You Now that I think about it, you can't because the opponent's gaining life points equal to the monster's original attack. Now, if they just Moonlit Chill you, you can do this same combo just as long as you can pop the field spell and double the attack of the Trident. You're guaranteed because they gain attack equal to the original. So they'll gain 3,000 off of this. Meanwhile, you're swinging with 18,000 because this is at 6,000. So you can play Prosperity all you want and you're you're gonna be just fine sugar boo bear like it's it's absolutely insane so what's my final verdict on this deck is this deck gonna be absolutely busted when it comes to the tcg uh hell yeah it will and um i wouldn't be surprised if uh, we see some preemptive hits on the ban list like say for example prosperity going to one which if prosperity does go to one it's not the end of the world um because of the fact that uh we can just supplement it with, uh, say, you know, one set rotation and one copy of where there's a will, there's a way out. That's a new field spell out of Legacy of Destruction that just lets you excavate cards equal to the number of cards on the opponent's field. Um, so it acts like another prosperity. Um, but this deck is going to be absolutely insane. Like I said, I'm, I'm testing 22 hand traps in this build. I don't want to show off the build um, because I've been really testing hard with this deck and I don't want to show off the goo just yet. But I did show off a build on the channel a couple days ago that played like 18 board breakers. It came in second place at a Kong's Cards online tournament. That is another route that you can go with the deck where you can play Triple Raigeki, Triple Thrust, Feather Duster, Change of Heart, Three Cosmics. You can do things like that. I just feel like that the hand traps are the best way to go because of the fact that sometimes you let these decks build up a board just uninhibited. You have nothing. And you draw for turn. You're sitting with three, ideally four board breakers in your hand. But if the opponent's just able to stop your stuff, whether it's rebuilding a board or whatever, that makes it a lot more difficult. You know, I've won plenty of matches, even against Snake Eye and Snake Eye Fire King, where I just cosmic their island, it dies. Everything dies on their board. They bring it back with shenanigans, and I just go right, Geki. And then everything's fucking dead anyway. So it was like, well, uh, it didn't really work out for you, did it, pimp? And then you just summon a dragon, and then you search, and then you're good. Um, could you play Call by the Grave in this deck? Uh, the mirror match I had, he was playing Call by the Grave uh, and Cross Out Designator. I just don't think you need those those cards. I really don't. I feel like it's similar with Centurion when I topped with that and got 10th place. Shameless plug. Uh, I was playing 15 hand traps, and I wasn't even playing Call by the Grave. At least I don't think I was. No, I wasn't playing Call by the Grave. I almost did. 
Um, I don't recall playing Call By, but I did play Three Talents. Um, if I did play Call By, then I played Call By. It's whatever. Um, but, you know, even if this, say, gets negated, you're sitting on four other cards in your hand and they're all hand traps, you're going to win the ball game most likely just from the number of interruptions. So, guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. Uh, I really hope this video doesn't blow up, but I have a feeling that it will because my views go up as, like, the months go by. Uh, I don't want people to know how to play against this deck. I want to keep on pantsing people, but, you know, you're going to have the MST TVs of the world and all of those other guys, bigger Yugi tubers showing off combos and shit, so I may as well get it out of the way now and say that I was first. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.